All right, welcome everyone to building HTML5 uh, mobile apps with uh, MongoDB. So my name is Max, I'm from TigZ, um, and I run developer relations for TigZ. Now, anyone heard of TigZ before? Awesome, very good, well, that's why I'm here. Um, so TigZ is a cloud-based mobile app platform, right? It has four main, well, five, five, components. Uh, so you've got a cloud-based mobile app builder, right? Basically ID in the cloud. The app you get at the end is a jQuery mobile HTML5 app, right? You know, JavaScript HTML. Uh, you can also do native apps or hybrid apps with Apache Cordova or Phone Gap, right? Um, so that's for the UI version. On the back end, you can consume any REST service out there. Anything that's available is REST. Sorry, from Twitter, to anything that exposes REST you can use. Um, and then this part is the MongoDB. So <coughs> if you're building an app, you can consume all these services, but you also want to be able to save data, your app data, into a database, right? So that's where MongoDB um, comes into that. We put a really nice console on top of MongoDB. We've got a really nice API layer on top of MongoDB. It makes it super easy to build you know, HTML5 different mobile apps, right? And of course, in the middle, there's your app. So Four components, five components, doesn't matter. So that's actually all four slides that I have. From now, I'm actually going to switch to the platform. I'm going to build an app for you, which you'll be able to actually try as I build it. All right? Okay. I've got one more slide, some information at the end. Of it. Uh, we'll do it later. All right. So this is um, this is the um, site, right? It's uh, tc.com. This is the start page. What I'm going to do when I create a new app. Um, so we'll just know SQL app, all right? And click create. So again, this is running in the browser, which means nothing to install, nothing to download, which makes it incredibly easy to start, right? In a few seconds here, it's going to load. You're also going to see, it's going to say connected to collaboration server. So what that means, we basically got a Google Docs-like model, where you can have developers working on the app at the same time or at different times, right? So it's just depending on the web file speed, so it will load in just a few seconds. But now the first thing I'm going to do is just to give you an idea how it works. Uh, I'm not going to use MongoDB right away. I'm going to use um, Twitter's uh, search API, right? So this is an example of connecting to any API out there. So this is the builder, and this is your phone. You can also do a tablet. On th this is your palette, and these are uh, jQuery mobile components. And also some HTML5 component, <coughs> audio, video, and there's a Google Maps component. So the first step um, is to build the UI. To build the UI, basically what you do is you just drag and drop components. All right, you can make a search. And um, so search, because I'm going to be using Twitter's uh, search API. We can make a placeholder, and we can change this to app. Oh, app, here we go. All right, now keep in mind you're building your starting with HTML5 mobile app, the Chrome mobile app. Now, it's going to be running in the browser. Now, if it's running in the browser, we want to test it in the browser. And we can easily do it, there's a big test button which will open the app in the browser. So this is the real thing. Now, the frame is, of course, for us, kind of, right? But this is the real thing. And it doesn't do anything yet, but it will. Now, I mentioned you guys can try the app as I build it. Well, this URL is private by default. So I'm going to make it public. Um, public. Now, you obviously don't want to type this URL. So what I'm going to do is, um, give me a sec here. Um, right, so this is how it looks without the frame. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to open tiny URL. And I'm going to create a shortcut so it's easier for you guys to enter it. So let's call this no SQL. I don't know, we'll try it. I'll take it just one, just so we don't have to redo it. Nope. I guess someone already has it. Nine. Oh, man. Okay. 11.49 is the time. Oh, finally. All right. <laughs> so this is the URL. You guys can open it on your phone, your tablet, or your laptop as well. So it's tiny URL, no SQL, 1149. Sorry, everything else was taken. All right, so again, no SQL, 1149. 
Another option um, is um, there is a QR code actually. If you guys, um, sometimes depending on the distance and the device, you can scan the QR code if you have an app on your phone. So, so you can also do this. Or find your old account, no SQL 1149. Right? So let me know when someone gets it and we'll continue. All right. Awesome. So this is the this is the actual uh, app. So let me continue. So this is for the input portion. Let's get the uh, uh, output we're going to display the result. So we're going to get a grid component has two columns by default, useful for layout. You can do more columns, more rows. In the first one, I'm going to put an image component, and this is the Twitter image. Now I know ahead of time the size that Twitter is going to send me is 48 by 48. So I'm going to resize it. I'm going to resize it right here. In the other two columns, I'm going to put two labels. So label one, label two. This is uh, uh, the Twitter username and the Twitter uh, the actual text. All right? Now, we also got a bunch of themes, jQuery mobile themes. This is just a short list, but we can make it like this. And if you click test, if you guys refresh, you'll see something like this. Right? Not a whole lot change, but. All right? Anyhow, so this is for the UI, right? Hopefully you get the idea. You build the UI, you can test it instantly on the device. Uh, and of course, you can create multiple screens. You can navigate between the screens. You can run JavaScript and so on. So basically, up to this level, if I said this is all we have, basically you can build the UI portion of the app, right? But of course, we want to be able to get data, and that's what I'm going to do next. So I go to Project, and I'm going to create a new, uh, a new service, right? Uh, REST service. Click OK, and this is the service editor. This is the key right here. Right, so this is connecting to Twitter, but again, as I said, you can imagine any REST API goes anything. Right, that's open, requires authentication, doesn't matter. Now, Twitter, we're going to change to JSONP. Now, every service will have inputs and outputs. That's why we switch to request parameters. And in Twitter's case, it's Q, so it stands for query. It has outcome parameters, but we're not going to worry about that. What's really also nice is that we can test the service right here. So before using it on a page, we can make sure it works. So there's a test connection. We're going to click uh, and create you know, five, for example, but really anything goes against Twitter. Click test, and this is the result we get. This is the JSON that we get, right? And this is not only for us to kind of read the results, but to make sure the service works. If you get an error message, then maybe the primary is incorrect and so on. So very useful. But there's another reason we want to do this is because we can automatically create the services response based on this JSON. Right? We get a lot of stuff back on Twitter, so we don't want to do it by hand. So clicking this button will uh, automatically define the response for us. Right? So this is everything I get back from Twitter. Now, I could do this by hand, but it would take me a little bit longer. Right? So we got output, we got input, we got the service. So let's save, close. Right? Oh, sorry. Too early. Um, now I'm going to add the service to the page. So I just drag and drop the service. And this indicates the service is on the page. All right? Next one, I need to, need to bind the service to my page, to my UI. OK? And for that, there's a data mapping tab. And I'm just going to cloud it. So this is your service, and this is the page. All right? This is the input. So this is the input component. Right? And of course, give it a different name. So. Uh, and I just map it like this. <coughs> All right? And uh, you can also write JavaScript. So you can do something with the value before it's being sent. So this is for input. This is for the, on the response side. This is the result. This is the collection of all the tweets. So I'm going to map it to the grid component. Why to the grid component? It's going to give me a looping functionality, right? Because you get multiple tweets. So I'm mapping a JSON array to a grid component where you can do a list. Uh, now we need to find the stuff we want to display. So text, this is actual tweet text. It's going to go to the second label and second column. Uh, profile image URL is the URL for the picture. So this is going to go to the image. And the last thing you need to find is from user. Um, from user, it's here. Um, from user goes here. Right? So again, you can write JavaScript. You can set this into local storage. Again. The app is running in the browser. So anything you can do with JavaScript, anything the browser will allow you to do, you can do. All right, so save. Go back here. The last thing we need to do is we need to invoke the service. Right? So we put the service on the page with the binding. When I click this button, that's when I would like to invoke the service. For that, I go to events. And I get all the 
browser event for the for this button, uh, edit click event, and uh, there are some actions you can run. So again, run custom JavaScript, so really up to you. Uh, but this particular one, I'm going to use invoke service. All right, and test. Um, all right, so we got the app. Okay, this is a real app, not just hello world. Uh, this is a real mobile app um, that's that's talking to a Twitter search API. All right, you guys, see, you just have to refresh, and you'll be able to get the same. All right, anyone got it? All right, um, so I'm going to talk about MongoDB, but uh, really quickly I mentioned PhoneGap. So, you know, if you're wondering where is PhoneGap, so so far what we built is just a jQuery mobile app. Okay, uh, so there's an export uh, uh, feature, and you can export it to Android, iOS, and then Windows Phone. Right. So, for example, right here, this is really awesome because this release binary for Android. You're a few minutes before publishing into the Play Market. And then it's there five minutes later and so on. And iOS obviously is a little bit more. We'll take more time. All right, but uh, there's a build service that you can involve and it's going to build the file for you. Uh, or even you can, if you don't use any, if you don't need a phone gap app, you can just export the web portion. And, right? Now, also phone gap provides more than just the wrapper, it also provides APIs to talk to the device, like you work with the camera and so on. So you can do that as well. And in fact, we've got some. Um, uh, components which are based on PhoneGap API. Now, you only see four things here. Of course, PhoneGap provides much, much more. So how do you use that? Well, you just use the API directly. So anywhere you can write JavaScript, you can say, invoke this feature, this, and you'll be able to get it. All right, so this is where PhoneGap, PhoneGap comes into. All right, any questions? Well, it's fine here. <laughs> so it's not here, like, for example, if you have features which are not on the left side over there. So uh, you say you can just write JavaScript and uh, get access to them? Yeah, so you can, you can use any, any JavaScript. I mean, you, you can load the file, you can write it yourself, it doesn't matter. So yeah, um, so if you, if you have a widget you're using, so it's not going to appear in the palette. It's not going to appear automatically in the palette. And um, there is, it won't support the map. It's something we're planning to do where you can actually import other widgets or libraries, but again, you can you can add it, but you have to do it sort of by hand. But let's say you want GPS on the phone, right? And the GPS on the phone is not visible on in there, right? So how uh, do you GPS, do you? um a geolocation. Oh, you have that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But something that you don't have, but it is on the phone. How do you add that? So anything the phone app provides, you can use. So every every. Uh, Anything device specific is done via phone app. So we don't change phone app in any way. Whatever they support, you'll be able to use. What's jQuery? jQuery. Just the plain jQuery. It's is there? Yeah, because the jQuery mobile requires. Uh, yeah. So there's jQuery, there's jQuery mobile, and phone app. Uh, how do they prepare it? Prelude. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Just deliver. 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 I'm not sure I'm familiar with them. No. Sorry. I mean, if you if you want to show it to me after. Uh, yeah. But this is much better. <laughs> 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 but no, I I I think I heard it. So I'll if you can show me the URL. All right. Um. So let's go to um. MongoDB. So um. We've got some um. It's right here. So iontc.com. These are our sort of kind of backend services. Um, I say backend services. So database is the first um, sort of feature in in, in the backend services. So this is this is a list of databases, but I just created the one. So no SQL DB. I'm going to create a new one. So this is the console that we we'll build on top of uh, MongoDB, right? So we've got dashboard collection. There's user management. There's files. Uh, some settings. In, in the reporting, so it tells you how many API calls you made, how much storage you use, and so on. So 
So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Uh, but let's go to collection browser and let's create a new collection. Um, we'll call this to do. Okay. Building a to do app. All right, click add. This is the collection, and um, these are the default fields or, or columns. And um, we can add a new, um, let's add a column. And we'll do this name, create column. All right, now we can enter sample data. So, um, row. And we can say, um, uh, what should we do? Deadline, right? And uh, we can do one more. Um, Right? So you can see you can, you can put sample data. Uh, there's also ACL, so there's security access control that you can also specify. Um, right? Now, what um, everything you do here is instantly exposes REST. And once it's exposes REST, we can instantly use it in the, in the app. And we actually even have a REST hints. We've got a crawl command available to show you what the command will be for get, for find, and for create. All right, so let's do get for example. So this is the um, this is the curl command. So first I'm going to get a URL. It's going to go like this. I'm going to go back here. Go back here, and I'm going to create a new service. Uh, so this is to do get. Click OK. All right, put the URL. Now I do need to delete this part. Um, so I'm going to put. To do right, that's like that's the collection name. Now going back here um, to identify that you know this is actually my collection name to so specify the database ID, and um, I just switch to request parameters, set the ID, all right, and then I'm going to copy this uh, key, all right, and make this a header. Okay, so remember now I mean I can test the service to make sure it works, which is really nice. I go to test connection, click test. I instantly get the results, right? Now again, I would need to define the response by hand, but I don't have to do it. I can use this button to automatically define the response. Service response, click the button, <coughs> close. So this is what I get, right? So super, super fast. All right, so we got the service, right? It's working. Next step is we need to build a page. Okay, so let's build a page and display these values. Uh, I'm going to create a new page, screen, and we call this to do, well, j to do is fine. All right, and uh, let's switch to palette, and let's use another component, let's use um, a list component now. So we've got a jQuery list component. Now it has three items, so these are for static items, because I'm gonna be actually looping over the list, I um, don't need, I just need one item. Okay, and we can make this from corners. I think it looks a little better. Okay, so we got the UI, we can test it, but it's not going to very interesting. I was going to make a list of one item. So now we add a service to the page, correct? So we got, got the UI, we got the service to the page, next we have to bind the service to the page. We go to data mapping, and this is the input array. So the input is set, right? That's the key that I'm sending. We go to response mapping, and uh, let's open this. This is the collection of all the to-do things, and we're going to map it to the list, and this is the name, and we're going to map it to text. All right? Make sense? Okay. Now, last thing I need to do is to invoke the service, because just, be, just finding it's not going to be invoked, right? So before I invoke the service on button click, this I can invoke a page load or page show. So, um, Uh, so I go to events um, and I select a do load, get load event, and invoke service. All right? Uh, and oh, testing. So we just need to set this to be the first page because if I test, I'm going to get the Twitter page. Uh, so I go to there's uh, project uh, settings, uh, and I can set the first page right here. I actually there is a just wondering, I mean, this is extra information. There's Android binary APK settings and also iOS binary settings if you need to. Right? So let's close and let's test. Right? 
So you guys can try the same thing. You should get this list. All right. So again, and I don't know if you can be done any, any faster. Uh, but again, there's MongoDB, and we'll put the rest uh, later. Um, which again, very very elegant, and very very simple. And of course, the uh, the console that you saw, right, which makes it easy to create your collections, test collection, you know, get hands and so on. But let's look. I've got um, ten more minutes left, and let's add a feature where we can actually add new items, right? Um, so let's go back uh, here and uh, create, right? So this shows me again the curl, the curl command for it. Let me copy this um, and go to uh, service. I'm going to call this to do create. Okay, putting the URL. Yeah, so this is going to be collections to do. Now, we have to change the method to post, right? Because we're creating them. And going back here, we have to specify two things. First, the database ID. Uh, database ID and the key. All right. And we also need to specify the name property, correct? The actual two things, uh, the two item. We can actually test the connection here again. Uh, say, do something, right? Uh, click test. And this indicates that it was created, right? You get the item ID and I get the time is created. I can close, I can go back here, I can click to do, and now I get three items. All right, so this again indicates the service works. Let's quickly build the UI and um, we'll be done. So this is the UI, I'm gonna get an input component up here, I'm gonna get a button component up here, all right? Uh, and the last thing I need to do is I need to add the service onto the page. So drag and drop, right? So we've got the UI, we've got the service on the page. Next, we need to bind the service as before. So we go to mapping. Okay. And it says our service two and three, of course, you can name, so it's a little bit easier. Uh, so this is the request, this is the key. And the only thing I need to do is I need to get the input. Right, that's in my item. Now, I didn't define the response, which is fine, I and mean, it's not required. We're just not going to do anything with the response. He's still going to get the response, but we're just not really going to do anything with it. Right, and let's go back here. The last thing we need to do is we need to uh, invoke the service on button click. So we go click, invoke service, service three, right? The only thing we need to do is we need to refresh the list, right? So we could keep, we could, modify the list in the browser basically, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to make another request and reload the new list, right? And the only thing is we want to reload the list only, only if the post successfully finished, okay? And so for that, we're going to go, we're going to use a success event, or you can do complete, for example, oh, success probably event, right? So just, these are jQuery events. And uh, we go to invoke service and service two, right? So once I add service finished successfully, I'm gonna do the load again. Say test, right? Oh, well, then we just a placeholder. So will this work? All right. And then you guys have to do the same thing. So it's fun. I can hit refresh and see what you guys have been typing. And what stuff you've been saving. So when you, when you add a service to the page, is, is there anything added on the application which is specific to Kingsley, or so when it exports the application, it's not going to have any Kingsley related? Yeah, there is nothing. I mean, all the code is I mean, it's writing in the browser, so I'm talking to the, to the database, all right? So, um, all right? Yeah, so you see? So, some people type. What's the error service right now? In the browser? 
on the back end. Um, No, it's a good question. I'm not, I'm not sure what 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 are we, what would what they use to, to to put this layer um, on top of. Um, but I mean, you can definitely find out. But I just use it. Yeah, it works, right? <laughs> um, but anyhow, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. Well, the last thing I know we've got some minutes left is so I was creating all these services by hand, right? Which is you know you can get. I mean, it's not difficult, but it's obviously. So what you can do is actually you can create services by just browsing the database already. Okay, so you select right here and you select these are all databases you have. Right? And so which one did I just create? Uh, this one. And it shows you all, all the collections you have. So you select the collection and then you can select all the methods or all the actions you want. Right? Now this is here for user management. So if you want to support user management or user logs in, so this is for that. Right. Yeah. So you can see to do and I select I want to, I want to generate all these services automatically. So I click import and I got all the services automatically. So I didn't have to create it in my hand. Right? So uh, what is this? This is a list service. This is a get. Uh, and you can see it has the database ID. And um, the database ID is saved into a property file. That's why you see it here. And of course, it has uh, the response defined already. Right? So it's even simple. All right? Um, but that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. Um, now, I promise one more slide. With, um, with information, so my email and um, um, well, the site, right? Now, I don't know if anyone has questions, if it's free or not, anyone answer that question? Is it free or not? <laughs> <laughs> so it is, a, it, it is a cloud service, so it's similar like Salesforce. You know, or, uh, so there is, so it's a free email model. So there's a free plan and then there's a paid plan. So what I'm going to do, you guys sign up, right? So in free plan, you can basically build one app. You get all the features. So we, you know, it's mostly on resources versus features. But sign up, shoot me an email, I'll get you two months, the most, the biggest plan, two months, right? So you shoot me an email. If, if you love it so much after two months and you still want to send another email, we'll figure out something, right? Um, other than that, I'm done. If we are um, no, no, but uh, I guess we're competing against them. But this is still better. <laughs> no, no, we're not. They, 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 they have something similar, but um, so they do have also cloud services. They acquired the company back in the last year or so. Uh, but their tooling is Eclipse based. Services, yes. Yeah, you can connect. So anything that exposes REST, anything. Doesn't matter, accelerator, Twitter, Facebook, you name it, you can use, yes. Um so if you go to um, if you go to play, the Google Play, you can search for like Pixie and then because the, the project ID, sometimes people leave the, the name. Uh, we are actually launching an actual page on our site. It's not public yet. Uh, so you can, um, you, you'll be able to see that. So most apps, most, and I have a couple percentage, people are building HTML5 apps. Uh, it's just it's simpler, and then they export the apps, and then they can host it within their organization or some custom domain. Second is Android. And iOS, because again, it just takes more for the building and the certificates and so on, so just more stuff. So we see sort of HTML5 and Android and iOS. Why did you shoot Mongo? We just like it. It's awesome. You know, it, was, it was very easy to set up, uh, very easy to install, very easy to add this API layer, this console on top of it. I think the, the API is extremely simple and it's just extremely elegant. So. Are the database supposed to get or something? Sorry? Where are the Mongo databases supposed to be? Amazon. They are on Amazon. Right. Well, it's 
12.15. And I'll be here to ask questions. If not, it's lunchtime.